Hey everyone, this is James, and in this video I'm going to uh, make the first of several videos on how to create profiles in the new profile builder online on the Nicolati Cloud dashboard. It is cloud.nicolatigroup.com. Sign in, create an account, whatever, go to profile builder and click open the first profile i'm going to show you how to create tonight is mainly just an example fixture of a moving head uh wash zoom fixture so we're going to use the eliminator striker wash uh, which i've already made this profile but i'm going to i'm not going to make everything exactly just to try to save time but I will walk you through the process of making fixtures like this one or very similar. So uh, the Eliminator Striker Wash is going to be created here. Create new profile. And I don't really need... If you, if there, if you know the brand of the fixture, you should obviously try to add it. So Eliminator, but... If it's your one of the mill 19 times 15 watt uh, wash zoom from Amazon or Alibaba or whatever, um, you just want to put it in underscore varied, which is right up here at the top. But for now, it's Eliminator, and I'm just going to call it Wash Demo. And I'm going to click Continue. And straight away, it loads up its properties, and I can assign it beams, in which case uh, it goes from 6 to 50. So I'm going to make it 50 degrees at the max. It's actually going to be uh, three beams, so one, two, and three. And click Save. If you only have uh, one output zone or one one beam you don't even have to do that you can just leave it empty and it'll just automatically give you one fixture square as it is um, resources you can fill this out if you want to physical it is a moving head uh, they used to give you head styles but this is a new uh, version of this editor and I don't see it uh, as a way to edit a certain style. So I'm just going to leave it as head 00, zero for now. Um, it doesn't matter too much in the 3D. It will still be a wash output as stated above in the, the beam section. Uh, for painted tilts, um, I think this one does... Uh, 220 by or 540 by 220, something like that. So, just check it out in the manual real quick. Uh, 540 to 210. So, we could just change this in here. 540, enter to save it. I'll just dial this down to 210. Um, that's if you want a custom center for your custom profile that you're making for something, you can do that here. This is just the DMX value for um, center in most of our softwares. Um, these are usually being called by default now. In the past, they were just uh, zero. Zero zero panel tilt, but now we're actually calling the the center its uh, as a default value. So um, that's something to keep in mind when you're doing the, the center distance. Uh, the speed is mainly just a reference for uh, the 3D visualizer. The invert is you can build it into the profile to be inverted pan or tilt. You probably don't really want to do that. Most software programs you can do that as a setting. You don't need to build something like that into the profile. Uh, RDM and sharing. Um, we haven't really gotten a whole lot of details on these. Well, at least RDM. 
So I'm gonna leave that alone. But for sharing, um, let's say I made this profile for somebody, and they are using my Go and they want it on their tablet, like ASAP. Um, they could just tell me their email address for that they used to sign into the app on the iPad, and uh, I can enter that email address here, and it'll automatically get sent to their um, user folder in the Mighty Mexico, and and even uh, to their their cloud portal account online for um, like the WMX1 and stuff like that. So so now we've set up the properties of the fixture. We can also rename it here, uh, send it to a different brand, assign it a category. But we need to get the profile itself made. So we're going to go to content. And mode 1 is empty by default. But you really want to start as a template because the template will help you do things much faster. So allow me to get this template uh, set up for this first group of channels here. So I'm going to do add channels and we're going to add pan and tilt. And so there's no fine from this selection. The pan and tilt fine isn't generated until after you've put it into a mode. So if you're trying to add another pan or another tilt uh, for your, your, your fine channels, don't do that. Just add one pan and one tilt. The fine channels are handled uh, in just a, just a moment. So they'll be handled later on. So pan and tilt, uh, now we got red, green, blue, and white. And we've got multiple pixels here in this fixture. But since this is the template, I only need to add one uh, base channel of each. I don't need to add three sets of red, green, blue, and white channels into the template. I can simply use the, the base channels or every channel that I'm going to need into the template. I don't need multiple repeats of anything. So I'm going to keep going. We have a uh, CTO, linear CT, which is right here. As you scroll down through the list, it is I'm missing it. Prism, speed, zoom, focus for us. Filter, sorry about that. Ugh. Filter is, will be your uh, color correction, stuff like that. So, linear CT, you got ring macros, so I just want a macro channel. And shutter. Shutter. Dimmer. I've got zoom and a speed channel can be used for pan and tilt speed, can be used for macro speed. There's many, many uses for the speed channel itself. You just want one of them. So shutter, dimmer, zoom, speed, and then we can do special functions in other. And that is it for this fixture. So now we've established this as of our, our template for the entire fixture because it contains a channel for every function and it doesn't include any repeats. So, um, and of course, you can repeat stuff if you wanted to or not, but I'm not going to do that yet. Um, you know, some of this stuff is still a little bit new to me, so I'm not going to mess with anything. Just leave everything as the default for now. And after I add it, I can change it up later. So, for example, the I don't need to create presets for pan or tilt. Not yet. It's not accept presets. Neither does red, green, blue, or white. But filter does. And I just want to add... This filter is a uh, 
But I also want to add in the off part of it. So like no function. And see, I messed up the order of this, which is fine because once I generate it, I could just uh, drop it, drag and drop it. No function to filter. The value is what? Zero to nine. Right there. Then the uh, properties of the filter are 3.2 to 10K. So I'm going to do 3 to 10. So as soon as I use this uh, in the a software, it's going to pop on the 3.2 and scroll through all the different white color presets up to uh, 10,000K. So, and so now we're working down to the ring macros. So we says no function. Um, there's 23, and I could just scroll down to I like, get to the macros, and I mean you'll notice that it pops up the recommended presets for the channel type that you're trying to make. So it loaded up uh, the other, uh, you know, other type of, ch of uh, preset. So I could just scroll down and find these. So we got one, two, three, four, five, Two, and then we have some color stuff going on here. So color, I like to just use these. We, don't, we used to have a nice one for like a color jump and stuff, but we don't anymore. So I just use color mix one, color mix two, and then sound autoplay. So that would be like a microphone or music. You can use whatever icon that you'd like, music note. These all show up in this list in the order that I selected them in. So now if I click add, you can see now I've got all these presets that I have to edit the values for based off of, uh, you know, these right here. So they're not perfectly, they're not totally matching up with the manual. So I can either edit these one by one, or I could do something kind of cool, which is distribute presets. And I just type in the end value of every preset all the way down to 255. So, uh, and I can even do the, the start, start value. So start value, um, you can define this by this, the number of values if it's consistent between every single preset by a space of four or five values. You can select this and just type in the size. But I have to do n values. And I'm going to select these, delete them, and just do um, first n value is seven, then do a comma. 12, 17, 7, 42, 47, 42, 47, 52, 7, 62. You'll notice this is red. It's saying, hey, you don't have enough to match up the amount of presets you've loaded. Keep going, you know. So you can't really mess this up a whole lot. 72, 77, 82, 87, 92, 97, 102, 107, uh, 112, 117, 122, 122, 181, 
240, and lastly 255. And that red text them away. And now I can distribute them, and everything will match according to the manual. So it's a lot better than having to click these one by one, type and enter, click it, type it, enter, click it, type and enter. If you can have all of them in view in your on your manual, um, you can do all this just by entering data, essentially. And that's kind of what this is. It's a glorified data entry. That's it's icon based data entry. That's basically what this is. So. All right, so that channel is done. Now we need to do the shutter channel, which is super important to get right for a lot of our controllers. So we need to do close, strobe, and open. So I'll click add. And the so it's already given us a warning saying the shutter close preset is default, which is not correct. So what I'll do I'm just going to uh, correct these values, 9, 250, and then click on open, let's click make default, and that error is gone now. You see that there's even four errors, there's four channels left, the errors are Mode 1 is has an empty mode, dimmer is empty, zoom is empty, speed is empty, other is empty. That's really all it's, at, it's uh, telling you to do. So, we'll just do dimmer, and quickly, just select the dimmer, right there, zoom, six zoom, and you want to do, uh, the minimum is 6, and then the maximum, I believe, is 50. Sometimes it doesn't like. Yeah. Sometimes a little picky. There. Sometimes it's a little touchy with the controls. So that's fine. And so now the minimum default value is 255, which should be wide open. Um, you can change the default, but then you kind of have to change the minimum angle to 50, the max 6, or something like that. I just leave it, and then I just change defaults in whatever software I'm using. So speed, add a preset, speed, uh, there's speed tracking, which is uh, certain functions on some moving heads, and then there's fixed speed, where there's like a fast, medium, slow, stuff like that. You can use this for that, but the general speed is just speed. I don't need to. You can see you can add in a bunch and select them, deselect them to get rid of them. I just need one. So there's only one there. Fast slow. Zero to 255. Make sure your default is set to zero all the time. Make sure it's set to zero. Otherwise, uh, if your default is set and they set to 127, your pan and tilt is never going to go as fast as it can. So always check your DMX defaults for stuff like your speed, your dimmer, your zoom, your shutter. Uh, even the macro channels, super important to make sure your default is is zero or within the first f uh, preset that does not contain anything uh, of any sort of macro or something that will override what you're actually trying to do. So, uh, last thing, other, last channel, I can rename it, I'll show functions. So and this is just going to be you know, no function. You can make these one by one if you really want to. Auto, uh, sound, reset, and, and no function. So you can make, you can do every single one of these if you really want to. I'm just trying to save time right now because you kind of get the idea. 
uh, just make sure your null function is, you know, ends at 10, your autos end at 90, the sound ends at 230, reset ends at 240, and last one, 250, 241, 255. So, and again, you can create more of these icons if you want to. I'm just trying to save time explaining this stuff right now. So, uh, we are done with the template. I still have an error because I haven't generated it into a mode. So, if I, the first mode could be 13 channel. Or it could be 23 channels. So we'll just do add channels, do select all, and we'll click add. That is 13 channel mode essentially. But you'll see I have uh, some little red errors to check. They always make you check the speed channels for uh, assigning it to the target which for us is pan and tilt. So just make sure you assign that and then it's, it's, it'll be nice and happy. It'll tell you it's all good. So for this type of fixture, uh, the speed channel has to be checked and assigned. For other types of fixtures, um, like things like global rotation, prism rotation, uh, anything that has like a rotation value or speed assignment, will have to be assigned to a channel for the profile to be uh, good. So, uh, 13 channel mode is done. Now we need to do 23. So, we'll add channels. I'll do these two first. We'll click add. And this is where I can do 16-bit. So, pen 1, 16-bit. It goes right underneath it to 60 bit. If you need to change this, you can absolutely drag this around, no problem. You know, if it's pan tilt, fan pine, uh, pan fine, tilt fine, uh, you can move these around just by clicking and dragging here, no problem at all. So, but I need to add more stuff. So, here's where I have all of our, um, Pixels. So I want red, green, blue, and white. And I just do repeat three times. And I do beams incremental. Start from beam number one. So that's beam one. This is beam two. This is beam three. And we should go from channel five all the way to 16. So there we go. Five. To 16. That's how quickly it is. Um, that's how quickly it is able to add pixels. And uh, you'll see that when I make the next profile video for adding um, like multi pixel LED bars or strobes and stuff like that. I'm going to make the, um, the Jolt 300 for you as an example of that. But I'll try to kind of show you more stuff about it. So, uh, so now we can just add the rest of these channels. Uh, filter, macro, strobe, dimmer, zoom, speed, special functions. After all existing channels, right there. And there we go, 23 channel mode. And we of course have to go to speed. Select speed, select the target, and pan. And that will be that. That is profile is good to go. There's no errors. I can now go back to properties and share it with somebody if I wanted to. I can set it as public. Um, you can share it with support. That's uh, on the Nickelodeon side. Um, they'll evaluate it, and if it's a good enough profile, they'll add it to the main library, maybe, or they'll just leave you alone for you to have it on your your side um i can also download it to my desktop and automatically this is added to my um my profiles in my cloud portal 
So if I go back to Cloud Portal and I go to Profiles, sometimes it gets these weird warnings. You should just ignore them. Switch over to uh, Data Modification, show the last 100, apply. As you can see, I've been a busy boy making profiles for people. And we got Watch Demo. It's assigned to eliminate the lighting. And I can even uh, change the owner. I can delete it. I can re edit it in Profile Builder. It opens up a new tab. And there I go. Back to where I was before. A template. Uh, that's the other thing. If you, if you edit something in the template, it will actually filter down to the modes. So, uh, you know, if I change, for example, just for fun, if I change the strobe to be uh, 245, so I've now added that, edited that into my template. If I now go to the shutter channels, it's now updated, 245. So if you need to edit something quickly, it's really good practice to make a, all the channels in template. So that way you have can uh, edit them much quicker later on. So I think this is what, two, 250, whatever, right? That doesn't matter, that uses anyways, 250, yeah. So now, once again, filter down into the channels so that is how you make moving wash fixtures um again you can anything that is sort of similar uh that i've done but it's slightly different on yours feel free to just modify what i've done to and add in your personal criteria for your fixture. But uh, typically this is uh, how wash fixtures are made and stuff like that. So this video is long enough, it's almost about a half hour. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below on YouTube or reply to my out of office reply that you may have got linked to this video from. Uh, or, um, you know, thumbs up the video on YouTube and subscribe because I'm making more of these as I can. Bye-bye.